Easter, everyone. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. This is uh, today is the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, and we are so grateful that we will be celebrating here without any restriction. And I greet everyone uh, a bountiful, bountiful Easter celebration, and may God bless you all. God bless. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Creative New Zealand who gave us funding for me to have this workshop for the Filipino, particularly in this group of Filipino, and we are going to celebrate the 500 years. And today, the theme of the workshop is about giving, which is talking about the meaning of gifted to give. And for the 10 days of the workshop from 9 to 5, all Filipino are very happy and all are very excited to create their own work. And I am. this is one of the examples of the work that they are doing, which I only try to give them an example of the question, what is giving means? And each one of them has to create a drawing and then try to explain the meaning of giving by creating the piece of work which is only you're only allowed to use a piece of cardboard and glue or glue gun that's all so all the different uh, people who are attending from 73 years old to the four years old and each one of them just has this meaning most of the time like Anita, Anita Mansil means giving means sharing love and Malaya Himadi said that giving means you give something that you want to give because that's how it is. Giving, giving means love to our environment where she's trying to create the love to the plant. And this one's giving means showing goodness and kindness, kindness towards others. The same with giving means sharing, it means kindness, where she created two hands reconnecting each other of the love. Giving means being kind, sharing a toy and food. Giving means an instrument of God's blessing, God's work through us. When this is need for God, loves and presence. He works his miracles through the gift and blessing he has given to us. This is a particular one I really like. Giving means lifting someone have something. And this kid is he is like eight years old. So today is the day that I promised to them that their work will be exhibited this celebration 500, 500 years where everyone will start seeing the peace of war and then also connecting to the church and actually I would like to for the people to understand that giving is more connecting to the environment and also to the community so the gifted to give is actually more expressing of how people help each other as a community. Thank you.
Hello. Happy 500 Hi. years. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.
organization and missionaries. More than 40 years later, Miguel Lopez de Legazzi arrived in Cebu together with the Augustinian friars. From there, he went to Manila four years later to establish the capital of the Spanish colonial government. A succession of religious orders followed, most notable of which are the Franciscans, the Jesuits, and the Dominicans. The presence of the clergy ensured the propagation of the faith.
the hovering color of blue. It signifies the role of the Holy Spirit in our country's past and present. The Holy Spirit reminds us to remember our past as it pushes us today and to tomorrow with great hope. The circular pattern of the Holy Spirit shows the Church's world mission. The ship. The ship signifies the expedition that brought the faith to the Philippines. It also depicts the boat of St. Peter and Noah's Ark. The Eclipse. The fish symbolizes Jesus and the sign used by the early Christians. It reminds us that we share the same faith as the early Christians. The color red is the blood of the martyrs. The central figure is a graphic art from the painting of Fernando Amazon, first baptism in the Philippines. The Holy Rosary. The, holy, the blue beads depict the Holy Rosary, <coughs> illustrating the Filipinos' deep devotion and love for their Blessed Mary's Mother, Mary El Pueblo Amante de Maria. The entire color scheme resembles the Philippine flag. The Christian faith flourished within the Filipino culture. Christian values, indeed, go beyond cultural diversities. Now, we are not just recipients of foreign missionaries, but also senders of missionaries all over the world. The final element is the hand of God the Father. All these images are placed on the subtle and gentle hand of God the Father in bold accented brown ones. He has planned the unfolding of all these events according to his will, giving us the whole picture of our celebration of the 500 years of our Christianity. Indeed, we are gifted to give. Good morning again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the central mystery of our faith as Christians. We too are invited to rise with Jesus. But first, we have to die to our old self our selfish desires, hopelessness, and miseries. Our trust lies in Jesus, who conquered the power of sin and death. United with him, we too can become new persons. Let us all rise for the Yes. 
give thanks for the message that Cardinal Tagle has shared with us this morning as we gather in wonderful numbers to give thanks to God. It's my pleasure today too to welcome His Excellency Archbishop Novartis Rogumba, the Apostolic Nuncio to New Zealand. So the representative of Pope Francis, thank you for being with us today. As we gather now to celebrate and to give thanks, as always, we think of who we are before God, that we are not worthy, but we also know that our God is a God of abundant mercy. So we pause and confidently ask for God's mercy. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life.
our tongues. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit of and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know the little yeast leaven all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough in as much as you are unleaven. For our Paschal lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but the wheat, the uneven bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. As we celebrate this Mass today, I ask you to never forget that everything is a gift 
from God. God is the giver behind the gift. There's a piece in the Gospel that says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples, gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them and said, as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. You received without charge, give without charge. Those words are from St. Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus told his followers to go out and to give without charge. I'm referring to those words today because that's really where the theme for this celebration throughout the world of 500 years of faith in the Philippines came from. The theme is gifted to give. Or as Jesus said in that gospel, you receive without charge, give without charge. We're reminded today as we join with you in giving abundant thanks to God for his gift of faith to the people of the Philippines that we receive the gospel without charge. And we are gifted to give. Jesus sent those disciples out telling them that God had freely given them life. And today we rejoice in the gift of new life through the resurrection. They were to go out and to share it with others. They were gifted to give the goodness of God, the love, the grace and the peace of God. And 500 years ago, the Spanish came and gifted faith to the people of the Philippines. There are, of course, questions of colonization, but above all, you receive the gift of the gospel, given freely. The people of the Philippines and people all of Filipinos all over the world have in the last few years been reflecting on those words, which are part of this theme of this logo, gifted to give. All of us, through God's goodness, are gifted to give. In the Gospel today, we heard on this Easter Sunday, Mary of Magdala going to the tomb, Simon Peter and John running to the tomb. It was only when they saw the empty tomb that faith was born in their hearts. They were immediately strengthened by the gracious gift of God. On this Easter day, faith therefore calls us to be joyful, to be grateful, and especially as we celebrate this gift of 500 years of the gospel in the life of Filipinos everywhere. In a sense, faith helps us to navigate our journey throughout life. We all know that there are challenges in life. Life can be difficult. For 500 years, there have been big difficulties for the people of the Philippines. First of all, that question of colonization. And then those natural things that you've had to contend with, earthquakes and cyclones, wars and poverty, and today, crime and drug addictions and the challenge of COVID-19. Faith helps us to be strong amid the storms of life and enables us to forge ahead confidently and peacefully, knowing that God is with us. It also brings us the duty to share the gift of faith with others. Before we share, before we evangelize, before we take the gospel to others, we need to know that, first of all, that we are deeply, deeply gifted with that gospel from the hand of God. So this Easter Sunday is a wonderful day to reflect on that gift of faith. And we will have the opportunity in the renewal of baptismal promises to say yes, to say yes to the faith that we have been given. That we do believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We do renounce evil things and we will live sharing the light of the gospel with others. 500 years have passed since your ancestors 
first heard the Christian message, they received the joy of the gospel. The good news that God loved us so much that he gave us his only son, which of course we've been reflecting on over this Easter time, on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and now we rejoice in the risen Lord. Just three weeks ago, Pope Francis celebrated a mass with only 200 people because of the COVID regulations, but it was a mass celebrated in honor of this 500th anniversary. He said to the Filipino people gathered that day, we see joy evident in your lives. We see it in your eyes, on your faces, in your songs, in your prayers, and in your generosity. We've witnessed that already today. The joy of you coming together as the people of the Philippines. We've heard the joy of song and prayer already. And I know because I witness your generosity over and over again. You have brought to us here in New Zealand your deep gift of faith. Your families have taken it to other parts of the world. Faith is part of you. And that's what we celebrate and give thanks for today. The Holy Father that day said, There is a joy and an infectiousness as you keep bringing the faith, the good news that your ancestors received. Wherever you first heard the gospel, at whatever age you were, or whatever you were doing, it was God gifting you. Because God's deepest desire is that we might have life and have it to the full. He wants that for all of us. That's why we reinforce today that the church has a mission to share the gospel, the good news of love and kindness, and to go out to people who are hurting, people on the edges and on the fringes of life. At that Mass in St. Peter's, Pope Francis said, the more we love, the more we become capable of giving. We have all experienced the wonderful love of people who want to share God's gift with one another. That's what God does for us. It's the very nature of God to share life and love. And then he asks us to share it with one another. In two or three weeks' time, one of the post-resurrection stories you will hear is the story of Peter and John going into the temple in Jerusalem. There was a beggar there looking for something, waiting expectantly for Peter and John to give him something. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I have in the name of Jesus Christ, I will give you. Get up and walk. We don't have much silver or gold to give either. But what we do have is the gift of faith in Jesus. We don't have that silver or gold to give. But we have the presence of God. We are able to say to others, get up and walk. Get up and be strong. Get up and stand tall because God is with you. And God gifts you with life, with goodness, with peace, with joy, with love. We are gifted today. And today we give thanks that you as the Filipino community have given so much to the local church of Wellington. I know that you will continue to give because that's part of your nature. I also encourage you to continue to give thanks to God for the gift of faith and to look for ways to share it with others and to know, to know deep in your hearts that everything we have is gift and God is the giver behind the gift. And therefore, if God has gifted us with so much goodness, with so much love, and with the very life of God himself in the resurrection of Jesus. 
we can't help but know that we are all gifted to give. Please stand for our profession of faith. My sisters and brothers, through the Paschal Mystery, the Easter Mysteries we have celebrated, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observances have been concluded, I invite you to renew the promises made at your baptism, wherever that was and whatever part of the world that was. In baptism we renounce Satan and his works, and we promise to serve God and his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? And all his empty promises. Amen. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us in His grace. And I say to you, as you have professed your faith, stand tall, stand proud, knowing that we have the faith that God has gifted us, that we are one in the faith that we profess together today. May God keep us in His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, as He leads us to the promise of eternal life.
Father. In turn, he will raise us up by his power. Let us bring our petitions to the Heavenly Father as we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis, Cardinal John, Bishop Paul, and all the clergy. Strengthen them in proclaiming Christ's victory. May they continue to be anointed by the power of resurrection despite resistance and worldly challenges. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, we pray for a new beginning, that people's hearts will turn to God and surrender their pains to Him. May we encounter the resurrected Christ in our daily lives, in our work and our relationships. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are adversely affected by the pandemic, those who are oppressed and victims of violence, that they may receive sufficient support from authorities. May we offer a helping hand and practical assistance to them. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the 500 years of Christianity that came to our land, enhance our faith to genuinely serve our community where we are to embrace our mission with humility and wisdom. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, Aotearoa, New Zealand. May we continue to unite towards peace and equality. Guide our leaders in our recovery effort towards economic progress and help alleviate the effect of job loss and unaffordable housing. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the urgent concerns of our community and for our personal intentions. Help us go deeper within ourselves and be able to hear your message that will lead us to a greater life and true conversion. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Father, your Son conquered the power of death. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives. Through Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with Easter gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We give the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, to above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The kapapahura o te no.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, St. Lorenzo Ruiz and St. Pedro Collinsod, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, and the order of four bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for you alone. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our, our, brothers, our brothers and sisters departed, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> Eya ia ke a ia e a ia ki a koe te atua mātua ka harawa Kau tahi tonu me te wairua tāpou te tino karoria me te hanore Mā ke a ke
for celebrating our Mass with us today. And a special thanks to His Excellency Archbishop Navatos Rambo, who has chosen to spend this Easter with us. We thank all the priests who have joined us in the celebration. Father Serrano, Father David, Father Rico, and Father Ben. Thank you. 